Hello and welcome to the 2024 edition of the machine learning course. In this short video, we will explain the details of how the course is run and what you will need to do to pass. First, let me introduce the team. On the left, you see the lecturers and coordinators, myself, Peter Bloom, Majid Mohammadi, and Bob Borsboom. And on the right, you see our small army of teaching assistants. Now, let's start with the most important thing. What do you need to do to pass the course? Three things. You need to pass four online quizzes, you need to pass the final exam, and you need to complete a group project. If you do this, you get two grades. One for the combined quizzes and exam, what we call the examination part of your grade, and one for the final project. If both grades are high enough, then your final grade is the average of the two. Here are the rules in more detail. For the exam and the quizzes, you score points. 10 each for the quizzes and 40 for the exam, for a maximum total of 80 possible points. You need to score at least 52 points to pass, which corresponds to a 5.5 for the examination. To support the exam and the quizzes, there are homework exercises. You can make these to prepare, but they are not graded. The answers are provided, so it's up to you how you use them. There are then weekly homework sessions to discuss the homework with your TA. The project is done in groups of five. Here, the minimum grade is 4.5. Note, however, that the minimum final grade is a 5.5. So if your project grade is this low, you will need to get a higher examination grade so that the average of the two is 5.5 or higher. The project is supported by group sessions, which start in the second week of the course. The grading system, despite our best efforts, is a little complex. This occasionally leads to some misunderstandings, of which these are the two most common ones. First, scoring half the points for the examination is not enough to pass. There is no rule that says that half the points of anything should correspond to a passing grade. In our case, we have found that a pass mark of 52 points for the quizzes and the exam together means that you've learned the minimum required subject matter. Second, the fact that you can get between 0 and 10 points for each quiz does not mean that these represent grades. That is, if you get 60 points for a quiz, that doesn't mean that you're on your way to a grade of 6. The points get added to the total, and the total needs to be higher than 52 points. The quizzes form the first half of the examination. These are four brief assignments that you do on Canvas. They include exam-style questions, but also open questions which are manually graded by the TAs. For the exam, the lectures are the main focus. There is also required reading, but this is there as support material if the lectures aren't enough to give you a complete understanding. The exam has a very predictable structure which you can use to your advantage. The main thing to worry about are the application questions. These require you to do things, like calculating something, deriving something, or following an algorithm. In short, this is the stuff you need to practice beforehand. To help you do that, you will find on Canvas, in the syllabus, Practice Exam A. This document gives example questions, but it also explains in detail what the structure of the exam will be. Of particular note is this list of 10 question types for the application questions on the exam. We will select four or five question types from this list for the final exam, and the structure of these questions will always be exactly the same with only small details changed. That means that the application part of the exam will be extremely predictable. If you've practiced these 10 types of questions well, there will be no surprises in this part. The homework helps you prepare for the application questions on the exam and in the quizzes. It's not graded and you are entirely free to decide how much of it you do. The homework sessions, which are not obligatory, are there to help you with the homework. If you do go there, however, you are expected to have done or to have tried to do the homework beforehand. This slide shows the first homework exercise. This is a particularly important one because it covers the preliminaries, the stuff we are assuming you know already. If you don't, that's fine, but it is then your own responsibility to brush up. The homework has some links for where to do that. There is also a lecture that explains the most important details of the preliminaries. You can register for a homework group on Canvas. Just go to Groups under People. 
You can then go to Schedule Details under Pages to find out when and where every group is. The lectures will be taught in what is known as flipped classroom style. That means the lectures are offered as pre-recorded videos, much like this one, which you are expected to watch before attending the physical session. The physical session is then a question-answer session where the lecturer will go into any questions you may have and re-explain important concepts from scratch where necessary. You can approach this any way you like. One approach, which we recommend, is to watch the videos at high speed and to try to understand them just well enough to formulate some questions. Then attend the QA session, which should allow you to follow most of the discussion. After that, you can use the written lecture notes to work through the more complex parts slowly. The second part of your grade is a machine learning project. This could be trying to analyze a particular data set, solving a particular problem, or implementing a particular algorithm from scratch. You are free to choose your own topic, and the TA can help you with this. Our suggestion is to spend the first weeks exploring and trying out different things. We offer five Jupyter notebooks called the Worksheets to help you get acquainted with the Python machine learning stack. Each should take 15 to 30 minutes to work through, and they serve mostly to give you a working environment to play around in. The deadline for picking a topic is February 22nd. You can, of course, commit to the topic earlier, so you have more time to perfect the report, but we do recommend exploring a little first. You may make your own groups however you like. There is a thread on the discussion board where you can look for groups to join. It's good to try and find a group with a similar level of ambition to your own. In principle, you are free to just join any group that has space. If you don't much care, just pick any group, join, and introduce yourself. As a courtesy to other students, please don't just join empty groups as a solo student. Join a group that is already part full. This is because a lot of groups need a little time to coordinate and to get five people together before they sign up, and that becomes very difficult when all groups already have one person in them. So try to avoid this situation. The project is supported in project sessions. There is no project session in the first week, and the project session in the last week is optional. You'll need to give a small presentation every session. This should be very informal, but you do need to have slides, just one or two, to show that you've thought about what you're going to say beforehand. Showing up without slides is counted as not showing up at all. People often find it difficult to figure out what to talk about in each session. So here are some examples of the sorts of slides we expect from you. In the first week, you can introduce your group and discuss the topics you're considering. This allows everybody to get a sense of what kind of topics different groups are thinking about, and it allows the TA to give you some feedback on what is manageable. In the week after that, you have perhaps managed some early data exploration for one of your candidate topics. If so, copy-paste whatever you have onto the slides and discuss what you're stuck on and what problems you see. Help the TA to help you do some early troubleshooting. Problems like unbalanced data, missing values, or poor label quality are important to identify early. If you get stuck somewhere, just present the problem and what you've tried to do so far. Maybe some students have encountered the same problem, and maybe the TA can give you some tips for how to solve the problem. You don't always have to present progress, but you do have to do something every week and present what you've done. If you're then halfway through some complex coding, you can perhaps present some code that's finished and explain what it does. Now, some people don't like working in groups, so they turn a project assignment into five individual assignments by immediately breaking up the work and never meeting again. Not only is this not the point of group work, it's very likely to fail. If one group member doesn't deliver or misunderstood the idea, the whole project goes wrong. We consider efficient group work one of the skills you are practicing in this course, just like coding, writing, and mathematics. If you don't invest in setting up a healthy group dynamic, it will hurt your grade. In principle, we will not intervene if a group member underdelivers or otherwise doesn't satisfy the obligations the group has set. Unless somebody stays entirely absent, it's your own responsibility. We have a very diverse group of students, and many will be grouped with people they haven't met before. Make sure that you're all on the same page about the kind of project you'd like to do and how complicated you want to make stuff. 
Nothing kills a project faster than a single highly motivated student dragging everybody into a hugely ambitious project. To make sure that everybody is clear about the group's goals, take your time before you pick the topic. Meet regularly and do lots of exploratory work. Give everybody time to learn what machine learning is about and to join the discussion. Finally, we'd like to point out a few things that often show up in evaluations and what we do about these points of criticism. The first complaint we often hear is that the course is too difficult and that it requires a lot of math skills. When possible, we try to simplify the course in response without watering it down too much. In the last two years, two complex topics have been removed. We ask program directors to check that students have at least some background in probability, calculus, and linear algebra before adding this course to their program. Still, for some people that means having had calculus in high school or having to recall a linear algebra course that wasn't very successful. We do our best to give you time to brush up on your preliminaries before we get into the hard math. The flip side of this is that we have certain goals to achieve. We don't just need to convey the basic ideas of machine learning. Many of you are going to do a master's soon, where the math level will be much higher. If we hold back now, you will only suffer more in the master. In short, there is a limit to how much simpler we can make the course. On the other side, we also hear occasionally that the course is too simple. More specifically, that despite all the complicated stuff we talk about, you only really need to master a small subset of the material in order to pass. It's important to realize that this is by design. Doing this is not cheating. We carefully choose a subset of the material as primary learning goals. Knowing these inside and out will get you a passing grade, and the better you know the rest, the closer you will get to a 10. This is how courses are supposed to work, especially a course like this with so many students from so many different backgrounds. A final point we saw a lot last year in the evaluations is that for the open quiz questions, there is little feedback from the TAs to justify the grades. Now, we cannot give individual feedback for two reasons. First, it's simply too much work. Remember, we have to mark 700 quizzes per week. And second, the TAs aren't qualified to argue with students about grades, and explicit feedback invites a certain amount of arguments. What we will try instead this year to still give some feedback is to have a general feedback session as part of the homework groups. Here the TA will point to specific issues that we encountered a lot during marking. In this session, you can also ask the homework TA to have a look at your submission if there's time. But remember, they will not be the TA that marked your quiz. To illustrate the course difficulty, here are the average passing grades and the pass percentages of previous years. Note that these do not point to a disproportionately difficult course. In fact, some years are a little higher than what would be expected from a sufficiently challenging course. This doesn't mean, of course, that we don't sympathize if you find the course difficult, or that we think it's your own fault. We are always happy to help, and we strongly believe that everybody should be able to learn these concepts. If you do find yourself struggling with the course, what should you do? First, you should note that it's perfectly possible and acceptable to pass the course without understanding all the ins and outs of every topic discussed. Quite often, the slides aim to provide a complete story so that if you need to know all the details about a certain topic, you have them in a self-contained package. That doesn't mean, however, that you always need to understand all details of every subject. You can often skip the technical details as long as you understand the larger message. To help you separate the wheat from the chaff, remember again to look at the practice exams early on. They will help you to understand what it is you should focus on if you find that the whole of a lecture is too much to digest. When it comes to following complex mathematical derivations, please note that it gets easier with practice. Maybe it takes you an hour to follow all the steps in a single slide the first time around, and your heart sinks at the prospect of doing that several times for every lecture. However, if you persevere, you will find that it will get easier very quickly, and before long it will be second nature. Lastly, the practice of recording videos may give the unfortunate impression that all material can be absorbed by passively watching a video. This is not the case. It should be enough to set the stage, and to give a skeletal understanding of the subject, but to understand the details, an active approach is necessary. 
you need to watch with pen and paper ready, and you'll have to frequently pause. Hopefully the lecture notes can help with this part of the process. Those are the main things to understand going into the course. If anything is still unclear, you can ask me any questions you like, but only after you've read this page from top to bottom. Notice that at the very end of the syllabus, there is an FAQ section, which is very likely to contain the question you have. Here are four things you can get started with today. And with that, you should know everything you need to start the course. I look forward to seeing you at the first lecture and I wish you good luck in mastering machine learning.